Houston, you're good at one minute. In this video, we will explore rocket stability. The stability of an object is its tendency to restore itself to its original condition when disturbed. The inherent stability of a rocket depends on the center of mass and center of pressure. The center of mass is the point where all the mass of the rocket can be considered to act. An object in free flight can only rotate about its center of mass. And now for center of pressure. If we imagine pressure to be created by particles of air impacting the rocket as shown here, with the rocket at an exaggerated angle, the stream of particles impacting this point will exert the force denoted by the blue arrow. This force can then be decomposed into the component at 90 degrees or normal to the rocket in red, and the force along or actually to the rocket in pink. The actual pink component of the force is what we call aerodynamic drag, and while this is important for rocket performance, it is not at all important to the determined rocket center of pressure and resulting stability. We can thus discard the drag force. We can repeat this exercise for every point along the rocket to obtain a normal force distribution. Along this distribution, there is a point where as much normal force acts ahead of it as behind it. This is much like the gravitational force ahead and behind of the balance point. This point is called the center of pressure, and all of the forces along the rocket can be summed up to a single force said to act only at the center of pressure. This force acting at the center of pressure will produce a moment about the center of mass, rotating the rocket. Knowing this, we can work out how the relationship between the locations of center of pressure and center of mass determine the stability of a rocket. If the center of pressure is ahead of the center of mass, any small disturbance will result in a normal force and moment in the direction of the disturbance, and the rocket spinning out of control. If the center of pressure is behind the center of mass on the other hand, any disturbance will result in a moment created restoring the rocket to its original orientation. The rocket is thus stable. We can see that the greater the distance is between the center of pressure and the center of mass, the longer lever arm the normal force has, and the rocket's tendency to rotate or moment will also be greater. To be able to apply this to an actual rocket launch, we need to elaborate on a few things. Mainly that, in practice, the center of pressure for a rocket is not a fixed point, but shifts as the pressure distribution changes. For example, if the rocket is at a great angle to the airflow, the center of pressure generally moves forward. The center of pressure also shifts dramatically when breaking the sound barrier, and then usually gradually moves forward with increasing Mach number. So now onto the fun part of going back to the footage shown at the beginning and applying what we have learned. From this graph, we can see the location of the center of mass and center of pressure during the initial stage of Saturn V launch. As you can see, the center of mass steadily moves forward as the fuel in the first stage is being consumed while the center of pressure suddenly jumps at about 60 seconds into the flight. The jump in center of pressure interestingly happens, at the same time the Saturn V broke the sound barrier. From this graph we can see that the only time within the first two minutes the Saturn V was aerodynamically stable was when it broke the sound barrier, and experienced the resulting shockwave. When experiencing the shockwave was presumably when the rocket was in the greatest need of stability, this in turn indicates that the physicists and engineers involved in constructing these rockets have a deep understanding of these concepts and the ability to apply them. 